Uh, let's dig a little bit deeper into it, though, and what the analysts are saying uh, as we do see shares under pressure. And for more on that, happy to welcome back into the show CFR analyst Tuna, uh, Tuna Amobi. Uh, with the details on that one. And Tuna, I mean, when we look at it, you know, we've talked about some of these numbers getting pulled forward because of the pandemic. Some of the strength in streaming had been there. But this is a pretty wide miss, so wide that you cut your price target here by 20 bucks. Talk to me about whether or not this is a serious slowdown or just kind of a bump in the road. Uh, Zach, uh, good morning and great to be on. Um, there's no doubt that the uh, Disney Plus subscriber number was a little spooky. Um, despite the warning from Bob Chapek, I think uh, that number still is a little bit of a uh, below our expectations. But as you kind of dig deeper into what happened here, it is, um, you can see that the Delta variant did a number on the supply chain for content for film and television, and also the displacement of the India uh, Cricket uh, League. Uh, that was a factor in the roll-off of some hot star uh, subscribers, which are included in the Disney Plus numbers. Uh, and also the, the launch of uh, Star Plus in Latin America was a little bit delayed. All of those factors, I think, conspired uh, to, uh, to see the number uh, for the number that we saw. Uh, with that being said, um, as we kind of look out uh, for the rest of this fiscal year, the company is ratcheting up the content in Disney Plus. They're going to double that uh, by the end of this fiscal year. Uh, and they're kind of ratcheting up their spending as well. So if there's anything we've learned from you know, Netflix is the fact that in any given quarter, uh, your subscriber numbers are going to be uh, uh, highly correlated to the content availability. Uh, so we did drop our, our target price uh, to kind of uh, factor in some resetting of expectations, uh, keeping our buy recommendation. Uh, and we can talk about it, Tpox, which gets uh, lost in the shuffle, as Emily said, um, you know, that division, I think, is moving in the right direction. The first quarter of profitability for the theme park since the pandemic started. So there's uh, some positive takeaways as well. Yeah, I mean, uh, cutting it to, to $200, so as I said, a $20 drop there in terms of the 12-month price target. Uh, when we look at the parks business, though, and I guess what we heard from Bob Chapek on the earnings call, uh, talking about not wanting to manage this company uh, quarter to quarter, but really sticking to their long-term goals for what Disney Plus could be. You know, a lot of the story at Disney obviously shifted to Disney Plus in the pandemic because parks were closed. I wonder if what we're seeing today might just be some of that churn and analysts once again kind of shifting back to uh, figuring out how important the parks business is here uh, for the company. I mean, if it benefited to the upside on streaming, I suppose it's going to see naturally a hit here as, as streaming slows. I think what's happened is a lot of the uh, the, the price action um, for the past you know couple of years that actually factored in sky high expectations for uh, for streaming and perhaps the fact that you know the theme parks are going to be um, you know uh, hit hard and they were hit hard. Uh, so now the theme parks for the first time uh, worldwide uh, open for the entire quarter, uh, albeit capacity restrictions are still there. So they still kind of see the toggling expectations here between the streaming, uh, you know, getting uh, you know. Uh, slow down and then the theme parks coming back perhaps on a pace that is not as fast as some people would like. Uh, although I would argue that as kind of we kind of look further out, um, you know, and, and now that the uh, U.S. government has approved vaccinations for five to 11 year olds uh, and also the uh, borders are opening up for fully vaccinated international travelers, um, all of those factors we think are going to gradually start to shift expectations back toward the contribution of theme parks uh, as they continue to uh, to rebound. Uh, so all in all, you know, I think, um, you know, our expectations remain intact for the targets the company put out for streaming. Uh, and remember, ESPN Plus also had a better than expected net ads for uh, subscribers, about 2.2 million. So, and then with Hulu as well, now being profitable, all of these kind of, think about Disney as a three-pronged, uh, direct to consumer, um, you know, strategy, which is very different. Some people forget compared to Netflix, which has a one size fits all global approach. Uh, this is kind of tweaking its off frame market by market. It's going to be doubling the number of markets over the next year from about 60 mm -hmm. to about 160 to talk about by fiscal 2023. All of that gives us, uh, you know, bodes well for the international runway that we see that get them to that target that they've laid out. Lastly here, though, just kind of focusing once again on, on the park side, uh, to, to get to that $200 price target, uh, what are the expectations for the bounce back? How quickly does the park side of the business need to get back in order to justify, uh, I guess, a return or, or reaching 200 bucks a share? 
That's a great question, Zach. That assumes uh, continued major sequential improvement in attendance, as we saw in the past September quarter with attendance, uh, um, you know, uh, sequentially uh, improving. The uh, the other metric, the uh, impact guest spending, total guest spend per cap was up 30 uh, percent over pre-pandemic levels uh, for the just September quarter. So all of those things are going in the right direction. To your question, um, we think that the parks, while they're still some ways off the peak attendance level we saw pre-pandemic, uh, every quarter in the next few quarters, I, it's not inconceivable that by the early fiscal 23, they should begin to see those peak levels again. And you're going to see the uh, profits roaring back. Uh, at that point, it's going to become really, uh, the story is going to start to uh, gradually gravitate to uh, to the theme parks. And remember, the uh, the traditional media businesses gets lost as well. Advertising and affiliate growth, those things are also uh, coming back. Uh, and, and as we kind of look out um, the next uh, year or so, you're going to see things start to normalize uh, even better. And we also heard, uh, add Disney to the list of companies discussing metaverse plans as well. Bob Chapek saying that Disney is ready to go into uh, the metaverse, uh, talking about virtual reality stuff. But we got enough here to focus in on the short term uh, as we saw that subscriber number miss and everything else. Tuna Moby from CFRA, appreciate you coming on here to break it down. We'll see what happens there uh, as shares continue to face pressure in the session.